today belongs to the architect. He sees towers before they pierce the sky, an opportunity before it transforms into the extraordinary. He knows that what he wants most cannot be given. It must be sculpted. So he builds. He builds because those skylines don't raise themselves from the earth. The extraordinary does not appear on its own. They are dreamed into existence by the architects of reality. The ones who seek not to take from the world, but to contribute to it. Today is the beginning of something new, something better, something worth remembering. And it's existed long before the present moment, waiting for your vision, your courage, your persistence to bring it to life. Too many times we fail to reach into the realm of what we know and get more of ourselves. It's okay to struggle, to be wrong, to have to rebuild a thousand times, but the great tragedy is closing our eyes and walking by life's opportunity. Everything you need to rebuild the life you dream of is around you, your every move. If only you'd reach for it, see it before your eyes do become the architect of change. Nothing is impossible when you are the one setting the rules, when your hand draws the guidelines. You are not at the mercy of the world. You are creating it. This is yours. And there will never be a moment like it again. So don't run from it or hope life gives you what you want. Take the pieces in front of you and construct your masterpiece. You pick up a stick and you draw a line in the sand. And on one side of this line is everything that's possible for you. Everything you can have, everything obtainable in your life. And on the other side is what's not. Those things you've decided are sort of beyond the realm of reality. Save for your fantasies, imagination. They're the job, the people, the cars that you walk by and think must be nice. Okay, and you notice that this divide's incredibly reliable. The things you have on the possible side, they remain possible. You reach for them, you gravitate towards them because you identify them as real. Just like the other side of that line is guaranteed to remain the same. Why would you work towards something that's impossible or unobtainable? Why would you waste your time? But now let's experiment. Okay, so you take your foot, you drag it over this line, you erase it. You pick up that stick and you draw a new line a few inches over. And now a small portion of the impossible things are on the possible side, okay? Maybe the job or the house. And you look down at this new portrait, this new picture, and you see a new reality. Okay, your actions start reflecting this change. You start acting like someone who deserves these things. If you don't believe there's gold under your feet, you never dig for it, right? The hardest part isn't digging, it's convincing yourself that this dream, this goal, this desire, it can be yours. It's closing your eyes and seeing yourself as what you want to be. And that's one of the hardest things for people to do. It's why we stay grounded because it's literally step one that we miss. You can't begin a journey to something better if you don't believe it's waiting for you, if you don't become it before you have it. And here's what's incredible. 
that line in the sand, it can be redrawn over and over again. It's never permanent. Every day, you can recreate what's possible just by taking yesterday's fantasies and placing them on your side of the line. Telling yourself that it's part of who you are, it's your identity, and humans always follow through to who they believe they are. Runners run, teachers teach. If you believe you're wealthy, you will find ways to generate wealth. This is power, not magic. Where you close your eyes and the world changes. No, this is saying to yourself, okay, I can be this, I can have this, and then living up to it. Changing every day, staying where you are is not always some dramatic action. It's often failing to realize that you have the world in the palm of your hand. Not watering the sea because you don't have the foresight to visualize what it can become. These lines do not need to exist. They don't need to hold you back. Redraw your expectations, adjust your outlook, and change your world. They say heavy is the head that wears the crown. That with the ability to influence comes a burden, a worry not felt by the masses. That power like anything has its costs. And I don't disagree. But I can't help wondering what value lies in the alternative. See, today is my empire. Each action my subject, I rule this kingdom with an iron fist because it is mine. Because I will not let my life be dictated by foreign aggressors. I am king, not because of the crown on my head, but because of the life that I lead. Because when you govern your own beliefs and expectations, you bow to no man. My thoughts are loyal. My decisions comprise the greatest army this world has ever seen. And unless I say otherwise, it will conquer to the ends of the earth. My world is simple. Rule or be ruled, do or wish, act or hope. It's always easier to be the subject, to be directed, to take orders, to complain about the decisions made up the chain of command, but easy will never change your life, will it? Heavy is the head that wears the crown because to have control is to take on risk. It's dangerous, it's vulnerable but you'd be hard pressed to find another soul who didn't want to be king or queen, who didn't envy the crown. It wasn't a matter of desire, it was a matter of courage. And when it came down to it, when things gravitated outside of their comfort zone, they simply cowered. Everyone has a crown at their feet, everyone. The question is, will you pick it up? No decision is more consequential than the decision to take control. To rule over your life, the universe does not control you, it empowers you. Too many people complain about being locked inside a room of limitation when they have a key in one hand and a map in the other. No one can make you take the first step. No one can push you out the door. Potential is never guaranteed to materialize. Royalty must decide to rule. 
to differentiate themselves from everything else, from the excuses, the difficulty, and the odds reign over your life. Conquer the unconquerable. Be brave enough to wear that crown. The possibilities always outweigh the risk. What you look for in life tends to be what you find. What you believe is usually what you see, which means your existence hinges on where you build your walls. And part of the reason stories, music, movies, they move us is because we're allowed, even if it's for a short period of time, to change our parameters on these things. To let the mind navigate through a world without any limitation. When you think about it, we never fast forward through a movie so that we can quickly check off the box and complete it. Right? We never rush through to move on to the sequel. No, we want to experience it. We want to be overwhelmed by emotion, captivated by excitement, lost in the mystery. And then when it's over, we retract, we return to reality. The walls come back up and the rules are reinstated. And from a 10,000 foot view, you can't help but look at that and, and wonder if there's more there. Why do we have to retreat to this microcosm of our ideal world where we're not rushed, we can enjoy the moment? Why does it take a dark room and objects depicted on a small screen for us to feel like it's acceptable to step outside of this everyday script? And the question isn't who's enforcing these rules, right? The answer is always us, it's internal, but the question is why? Is it incomprehensible that the same excitement be inserted into your world? Is it out of the realm of possibility that the rush of adrenaline, the peak experiences, the laughter, love, twists, and turns be inserted into reality? It's like we choose to be chased through life by ticking clocks and measured by socially constructed checkpoints. But we can move beyond that much beyond in those checkpoints. They're just as imaginary as the talking raccoon you set aside three hours to watch last night. So, by the way, you could escape from a manufactured reality, right? There's a powerful authoritative line that separates our day-to-day -day from the imagination, and every second is about pushing that back never fast-forwarding through life, but making it unlike anything else. Never applying the word mandatory to things that don't warrant the term. We need to think bigger. Working like a madman to build someone else's dream is not mandatory. Enjoying two-sevenths of your life is not mandatory. Being confined to one road when there are infinite paths to travel is not mandatory. They're components of a bad movie. And my point is not to be ungrateful. It's not to be resentful. It's to remind you that things are the way they are because you've allowed them to be that way. Nothing in life is destined, predetermined, or meant to be. Everything is decided. Life is chosen. Paths are taken. And sometimes a simple reminder that you have the flexibility to redefine the rules can make all the difference. You are entitled to happiness. Every day is a continuation of the extraordinary, not a break from it. And you have to see that. You have to believe that. You're not alive so that you can every so often escape. You're here to feel the imaginary, to challenge the make-believe. Our view of the world without a concentrated effort, it seems to contract. 
And this is your reminder to disallow that, to stop living for the five or the 10% and flip that ratio on its head. Now is the time to rewrite your script, recraft your storyline. And if what you look for is what you get, then it's time to see what you've never seen before. It makes perfect sense in our busy lives that we sometimes lose sight of fundamental truths. Right? At least from time to time, that's part of being human. And I wanna talk about an important one. The tendency to forget that parts make a whole. Sounds simple, sounds obvious, not so much. That pieces make a stack, that little actions create big change. And I can tell you that every time in my life I've found myself in trouble or overwhelmed or intimidated, it's because that very simple concept has eluded me. You know, and all I can see in the moment is how far I have to go. All I can see is this big intimidating result and I'm not there. And I wanna tell a quick story to provide some context. Those of you who have seen my videos, you probably guessed it, it's running related. Um, but if you're not a runner, hang tight because this is not in any way specific to running. Um, it's just a good way to articulate the message and you'll see that. So the realization occurred uh, a few days ago doing a distance run down A1A, which is just a, a long straight stretch um, down the coast of Florida. It's perfect to kind of zone out and just, just run. Uh, and that's exactly what I must have been doing, zoning out, because as I'm, you know, pretty, pretty far along, I uh, realized that they were kind of closing off the street. There were people lining the, the sidewalks. There was some kind of organized event. Realized that I couldn't go back the same way that I came up. So had to run up the, the, the beach. And it was one of those things where we, we've all been there, right? The idea was great. Uh, our body didn't necessarily like it. Um, it. It just was one of those days. It did, did not feel good. And I was really you know, trudging my way forward. And I noticed that every time I thought about the distance I needed to travel, I felt worse. Right? You know that feeling when you're uncomfortable? It's the thought of having to endure that for a long period of time that's most taxing. Sure, right now is uncomfortable, but you know what creates the anxiety is that it goes on for a long period of time. We don't see an end to the immediate. We can't stop thinking about the space between where we are and where we have to be, right? So I'm continuing along and you know my mind sort of makes its way back to my freshman year in college. And this is an important part in my life specifically because it's when I really learned what it meant to work hard. I had no idea, you know, and I speak about this often because I, I went through high school, I had good grades, I was a decent athlete, but I didn't understand what it meant to truly work. You know, my first month in college as part of the, the rowing team there was where I learned that just because you're suffering, just because you're hurting, doesn't mean you're entitled to anything. Someone else out there is suffering just as much. The difference is they might be getting more out of it. They're not feeling sorry for themselves. And that mentality was eye-opening for me. It's not, look at me, I'm a hero for putting myself through this. It's, yeah, it's uncomfortable. She's also uncomfortable. Which one of you guys is going to turn that into results? That's what defines winners. And I remember, you know, the first workouts uh, I did. I remember doing jump squats and wall sits with my teammates and, and emphasizing ways to break down the exercise into simple pieces, mentally, right? Little pieces that the mind was okay with, that weren't so scary. A two minute wall sit is pretty intimidating. A 20 second wall sit, that's not so bad. So do six of those. 
Say something funny between each set. Find a way to tear down uh, you, you know, the mental obstacles because the body can take so much if the mind lowers its defenses and simply allows it. So anyway, I'm making my, my way forward uh, up the coast and I stopped thinking about how far I had to go. I just stopped. I did not let it enter my brain. My focus went very specifically to every two steps, counting one, two, one, two, one, two, because anyone can do anything for two steps. It's not hard. Again, it just so happens that they stack up and create miles, but miles is not my concern, right? I'm not physically able to leap a mile. No one can do that. What I'm capable of doing is taking steps. That's all I can do. And it's manageable, and I can say without a doubt that that changed my experience. It took the pressure off. And if you don't feel like you're in control, you will have a very tough time generating results. Because again, no one can leap a mile. And so a big part of success is rearranging the deck so that you have that control. You're behind the wheel. Sometimes it's just reminding yourself that the little things create the big things. The pieces stack up and every single thing in life can be broken down into those little pieces. And guess what? They're not scary. When you take the cover off, they're not overwhelming. Most importantly, they're completely within your control. Right? On a similar note, a friend of mine recently asked the other day about YouTube. He's got a, a follower a base of entrepreneurs. Right? A lot of them are looking to take their business onto the platform. Uh, was asking me some questions. And he asked, you know, what was the moment that sparked your channel's growth? And it's a funny question because the, the 100,000 subscriber mark was something that, you know, right from the get-go, the onset that I, I was looking forward to, I was aiming for. But there was never that mile leap. Right? There was no single video that changed the trajectory of my viewership or channel or business. That's not how it happens. It's a step-by-step -step process. You can't jump to 100,000 or 500,000 or a million subscribers. And starting out, all I would think about is how far I had to go. I'd get all worked up and stressed out and you know, disappointed. But you learn lessons as you go through things. And I realized that you don't get X many subscribers in a day. And if that's your focus, of course you'll be overwhelmed because you can't control that. But what you can control is every thought, every video, every interaction with someone who cares about your message. And if you stay true to that, your consistency manifests itself in the form of a growing subscriber base. You know, and the point is, it doesn't matter what you're doing, right? Talk about running, talk about YouTube, it could be sports, it could be relationships, it could be anything. Yes, you want to understand where you're going, you want to know your target, you want to lock in a direction, then let go. Goals derail us because we forget what they're made of. They're made of little vulnerable pieces. To get to the top of a mountain, you have to climb it rock by rock. And when you're looking up from the base, yes, it's demoralizing. It might even seem impossible. But no one can cover that distance. It's about the steps to the top. And then at some point, so long as you decide not to turn around, so long as you remain committed to overcoming each tiny obstacle, each barrier, you'll be at the top looking down at everything else, everything below you. Why? Because you didn't see the stack. You saw the pieces that were laid on top of each other, one by one. And that makes all the difference. Success is seeing what's beyond the surface. What's past the things staring you in the face. And if you can manage to do that, you'll see that nothing in life, nothing is too big or too tough for you.
when it matters most. When the odds are against me, when precedent says no, there I will be. When the right path happens to be the lonely path, and victory is separated by a drop one million feet deep or a cliff two million feet high, there I will be. When they expect failure, anticipate defeat, celebrate each setback, there I will be, standing tall and ready. When there appears no way in, when my demons push me out, when my senses advocate retreat and the path forward is cloaked in doubt, there I will be standing tall and ready. When I feel alone in my pursuit of tomorrow or tempted by the comfort of yesterday, when pride whispers of their relentless criticism and my legs cry out in exhaustion, there I will be standing tall and ready. When hell rains down, when faith lets up, when my reason for beginning is replaced by a million little reminders of all that can go wrong, there I will be standing tall and ready. When the sky looks like a ceiling, when the floor feels like home, when every light dims and every fear illuminates, when eyes roll and doors lock, when the sun submits, the clouds emerge, gravity flexes and my knees tremble, there I will be. Never will I back down, never will I cower or settle for the present when our future is limitless. I will get back up until I've made my point, won my battle, secured my fight. The world is simple, moving forward is not without its tests or lessons, but as long as I continue on, I evolve. With each step, I win. There's no running away or white flag or surrendering to the man in the mirror, the only conqueror capable of bringing me down. No, nothing will tell me what I can be. I will always be there, standing tall and ready, not because it's their will, but because each day is mine and not theirs. Look, I'm tired, I'm worn, but I'm here. And I'm ready for anything that waits ahead. When you look at erosion, like say dunes on a beach, what you see is something giving itself away, little by little, deteriorating. Sure, there will be events that expedite the process, but generally speaking, it's lost a little bit at a time, day by day, right in front of our eyes. Until the time comes when we realize that what we have is no longer recognizable. It's sort of redefined. And I think in a lot of ways, we find ourselves in a similar situation. The concessions we allow every day slowly redefine who we are. You know, and it doesn't seem like much. That's the thing, it never does. Quietly detaching from what you believe, taking on an identity that doesn't quite align with who you are, doing things, being places that causes something in your gut to protest, toning down the color in your life so that you blend in. Right? These are not epic, monumental decisions. It's the drawn out erosion of what makes you who you are. It's the chipping away of what makes you spectacular. See, the idea that now isn't permanent, so I'll just suck it up now. What's the big deal? I'll just settle for now. Let me tell you, if that's your rationale, you're forgetting how easily tomorrow becomes never and now becomes forever. 
We operate under an illusion that things will become easier, that change will be less strenuous down the road. We'll make things right, get back on track, be happy then, but the harsh reality is that things don't get easier than they are at the present moment. It's quite the opposite. And to disregard or ignore this is to let yourself wither away at the hands of procrastination. If you're planning to wait for that, get comfortable. And see, conceding day in and day out, it alters your understanding of who you are and what you're capable of. Our actions reinforce our beliefs. Imagine a straight line, a simple straight line drawn on a piece of paper, right? You're in the middle. And on one end is who you are, in your heart, in your soul, and on the other end is everything you're not. Every time you sacrifice your principle, your beliefs, Every time you say, that's not me, but fine. That's not where I want to be, but okay, it's only temporary. You take a little step toward what you're not. And another step, and another step. And one day you look in the mirror and you have no clue who's looking back at you. Because you've conceded one small decision at a time. You've given away your sense of purpose. Sure, the situation is difficult. But the best things in life are the things that are not easy. You have to fight for those things. You have to stand up in the face of struggle, adversity, the narrative that others want to write for you. We stay within guidelines because we think the outside is scary. No, what's inside is scary. What's outside is what you need. And when you stop banking on the anticipated miracles of tomorrow and manage the reality of today, you succeed. It's life's greatest test. Are you brave enough to be you? Are you strong enough to fight back when you're tempted to hide, to blend in? Every time you summon the courage to stay true to yourself, it gets easier. The difficulty lessens. You become free of the mental chains you've placed around your ankles. There are certain things in life worthy of compromise. But your identity, your journey, what makes you feel alive, that is sacred ground. That is worth defending until your last breath. No one can take that because it's yours. And when you look back on your life and the amazing people in it, a life lived fully will always supersede marching through your days wearing a mask and following someone else's agenda. It's your life. It's your gift. Live it. The mind is like water, necessary for survival, productivity, but can just as easily drown out that likelihood of success. And I can tell you with confidence, you've never seen your body's limitations. What you've seen are the limitations of your mind. When you're tired or uncomfortable, weak or unsure, these things start as fear, being planted in your brain and attempting to grow roots, looking to acquire the real estate that exists between your ears. It's a powerful source. It can manipulate you, your reality, anyone and everyone around you but it only exists with your permission. And we're not always cognizant that we've opened the gate and let it in. That's the crazy part. 
Oh, but we do, subconsciously or not. It's the reason you haven't gone as far as you can go. Pushed as hard as you possibly can because at some point fear stood between you and what you want. At some point, you started asking yourself if you'd gone too far. Look, it doesn't matter if it's athletics or business or art or anything. When things become uncomfortable or hurt, fear always shows its face. It's not because, you know, you're dragging your leg on the floor or your knee gave out. It's not because you can't go on. It's because those thoughts trickle into your mind about not being able to finish. What if I can't handle this? I don't usually go this far. Am I pushing harder than I normally do? Is this right? Is it dangerous? Is it over the top? These thoughts are the seed of destruction, a virus. But here is the remedy. There's a saying in naval special operations that when your mind is telling you you're done, when you feel maxed out, you are only at 40% capacity. You haven't scratched the surface. And value isn't obtained until, in one way or another, you're able to realize this and push the panic, the anxiety back underground. You're not stopping because you can't go on. You're stopping because of the what ifs and the worst case scenarios. You're stopping because you're preconditioned to stay within boundaries. Because that seed has grown into concerns about the world conspiring against you, but the body does not control the mind. The mind dictates what the body does. See, the thing about life is that we all have narratives. We all have stories that we believe, and here's why that's important. Everything that happens to you or around you will be molded into your narrative. If you see something as crazy or far-fetched or impossible, life will be nothing more than evidence of that belief. Pain will be a wall 10 feet high. The old saying is seek and you shall find. What you look for is what you get. Expect greatness and the body will listen. Your world will conform. That's why believing is being. The body, it executes loyal to every belief. You'll always be what you decide to be. There have been times in my life when I'd been down. I've been out, I've been afraid. I've looked up at the road ahead and been completely unsure. And I can say firsthand when you're going through a situation like this, that uh, it essentially consumes you, right? It's all you see, it's all you think about to the point where the good stuff, the opportunity all around you, it becomes transparent. You see right through it. It's the negative, it's misfortune for a period of time that becomes your narrative, becomes the story. What if this is forever? What if I'm not as good as I wanna be or as they are? What if things don't work out? Never mind the fact that you've been here before and you've battled back. Never mind how far you've come. No, that takes a back seat to the discomfort that we feel right now. And that's the irrationality of the human mind. We forget. We forget that the lows create the highs. That temporary isn't forever, that you can't stand with any type of authority if you've never before fallen. Accomplishing anything is never just walking up and reaching a goal. It's about getting back up over and over again. Taking the bad breaks in stride and seeing the losses for what they are necessary. 
What if I told you that the difficult times weren't just manageable, they were what you needed? Those moments when you felt helpless were a bridge to something better, a demonstration of just how capable you are and how strong you can be. Feeling lost, feeling defeated, sure, it's unsettling, but it's also a reminder that you are exactly where you need to be. In one form or another, your struggle becomes your answer. Life isn't always calm seas and sunny skies, but if you let it, it will teach you to weather any storm to come out on top. Never lose sight of the opportunity, it's there hiding behind the struggle, immersed in the ups and downs. And when you know that you will not let yourself stay down, that you'll get up, struggle becomes a building block, not a weight around the ankles. With each stumble, you become taller. With each misstep, you step forward. The problem will never be tough times. It will be refusing to find that next level for fear of their materialization. Regret is a choice. And for those who refuse to stay down, it will be a choice that they'll never know. When you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. Mark Twain. There is a perfection in solitude, in the behind the scenes. This is where steps become miles, questions become answers, armor is crafted. It's where you learn that getting what you want in the long term means going through hell right now. Proving to yourself that you can do it not once, but over and over again, because the time will come when life hits hard when it brings you to your knees, but the battle-tested stand apart. Their demons were made to be conquered. The trail before you, it strengthens the mind. It tests the heart. It lights a fire in the soul. This trail has one priority to teach you that quitting is not circumstantial. It is a trait. You either do or you do not. And if you don't quit here, you will not quit anywhere. See, life's obstacles are relative. Sure, they're difficult, but compared to what? Who you are now or who you were yesterday? There are things we avoid our entire lives because we don't question the narratives we've written. Look, until you teach yourself that you're capable of climbing up the mountain, you will always go around it. That is why excellence is earned. Confidence is gained. When they are sleeping, you are working. When they're critiquing, you're creating. You know there's a way because there always has been. You've been down, but you got up. You've been tired, but you pushed through. Why should now be any different? Why should it ever be any different? Today is yours, tomorrow is yours, and it is impossible to stop a mind convinced of that 